Hi, my name is Dan Bigelow, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Applied Economics at Oregon State University. Econometrics is the development and application of statistical models to real-world data in order to answer questions about economic relationships. As an example, let's consider the relationship between the price of a house and nearby amenities. To be concrete, let's use a specific example of an amenity and focus on public parks. And to be even more specific, let's say we're interested in how housing prices are affected by having a park within a half mile of the house. So what we're going to do is construct what's called an econometric model of housing prices. In this model, we're going to have our housing price variable as the outcome or dependent variable. And then we're going to model house prices as a function of our variable measuring nearby park presence. We'll also want to include other stuff in the model that we think might affect the price of housing. Now, how do we figure out what this other stuff should be? In general, when specifying an econometric model, you're going to rely on a combination of formal economic theory, less formal economic reasoning, basic common sense, and what we know about the data available to us. So to keep things simple, let's say we're also going to include neighborhood income and the size of the house, both of which we think would have a positive relationship with housing prices. And then we're also going to include in the model a term that captures all the stuff we aren't accounting for and we'll call this our error term. Now, just as a side note, once you start doing econometrics in practice, you'll realize that how you handle this error term and specifically what assumptions you make about it are really critical for interpreting the results of your analysis. But for now, we're just gonna say that this error term accounts for everything other than income, house size, and nearby park presence that also affects housing prices. For example, this could be things like if the house has a swimming pool or is in a really good school district. With our model in mind, we're going to assemble a data set of housing prices, the average income in the neighborhood where each house is located, the size of each house, and whether each house has a park within walking distance. We're then going to use econometric methods to estimate the relationship between housing prices and nearby park presence, which is given by the beta 1 term in the equation, while also controlling for the way that income and house size affect housing prices. In doing so, we're conducting what's known as a hypothesis test of whether having a park nearby affects housing prices. Oftentimes, as economists, we're going to be interested in determining whether the relationship we've estimated can be interpreted as causal. For example, can we say that having a park nearby causes house prices to increase? Or can we only say that there's a positive relationship between house prices and having a nearby park? In the latter case, we've estimated what's known as a descriptive relationship. Both types of relationships, causal and descriptive, can be useful in different settings. And how you can interpret the relationship you've estimated is going to depend on the type of data you have and other aspects of your research design. So although it might seem daunting to think about how you can determine if you've estimated a causal or descriptive relationship, with proper econometric training and knowledge about the problem you're studying, you'll find that this is a much more manageable task than it initially appears.